Can you guys uh, hear me? Probably. Um, okay. Okay, one second. Next, let's wait two minutes. Just looking for some confirmation. Hey, Yuri, um, just a quick question. Can you guys hear me uh, well in the workshop? Because I'm in the workshop and I'm just wondering if people can see me and uh, actually hear me. Uh, I, 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 can right now. I, can, I can come in the workshop and, uh, and uh, talk with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I'm coming. But it works well, Menelaos. You see me? Yeah. Oh, perfect. OK. OK, then. I'll just start the workshop, right? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right. I uh, guess. Um, yep. It's a. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being here. Um, I'm a Manalas uh and on behalf of Trulio, I'm super uh, excited to be here today, and uh, I'll be talking to you and showcasing you this live workshop uh, about implementing uh, low-code API platforms and really eliminating a uh, boilerplate uh, coding. Um, and uh, just before uh, I start, just a huge shout out to uh, to the organizers. Um, we just actually attended uh, API Days uh, in New York, uh, and it was like a really uh, great, uh, great event. And, um, and thus we are thrilled to be here. So be before I jump into the actual uh, presentation, a little bit, uh, a little bit about myself. So I'm a uh, Menelaus. I'm a senior software engineer at Trulio, uh, and at Trulio we do online identity verification. Um, we verify people uh, around the globe, um, and again, we are we are very happy to be here. We are based out of uh, Vancouver, BC, so right now it's a uh, nighttime, um, and uh, and we are super thrilled to be showcasing you this uh, this uh, workshop here. So the agenda for today, um, we will be jumping right into the implementation. Um, and uh, we, we'll, I want it to be like a hands-on uh, experience. So uh, we'll be seeing a little bit of uh, how we develop uh, low-code, uh, no-code frameworks in Trulio. Uh, we will later on, um, I will first present you Embed ID and uh, I'll explain uh, what does it mean uh, to, to be an identity verification platform. Um, probably many of you uh, already know that, but uh, um, for those of you who don't know uh, low code or no code, or you, you don't really necessarily know identity verification, uh, then you are in the right presentation. I'll, uh, I'll be going uh, through every single detail. Uh, we'll be talking about the rise of the APIs and uh, how what's our decade, um, you know, our previous decade uh, what looked like and uh, what they knew that this decade will look like. And this is really exciting. Um, and uh, we will be later on drilling down to the low code evolution and how is that different from the tech revolution? Um, and then last but not least, uh, we'll be talking about how the future will look like in uh, three to five years from now. Um, and so um, without any further ado, uh, let's uh, jump into the workshop setup. So um, so for, for this workshop, you really need three really uh, basic uh, things. The first one is that you have to create a Trulia account um and uh feel free to visit that url right here so i'll be copy pasting that to the chat so you can actually uh, uh check it out 
Um, the other uh, thing that you need, and uh, I hope you have a Git, uh, Git setup, but if you don't, it's really easy to install Git. Um, all you have to do is Git clone this project right here, which I, I copy pasted in the chat, and then uh, a simple command, uh, npm start. So npm start uh, is going to be uh, to be that uh, the particular uh, command. Um, so uh, with that being said, um, with that being said, uh, let's uh, let's uh, see uh, exactly um, how how we actually uh, how we actually do that. Um, and so 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 we basically what we basically have. Um, moderation panel. I see. I see. There is a problem with the sounds. Um, can you guys hear me? Um, I, I hope that's a, that's a, just a, a problem on the on the end. I hope you guys uh, can hear me. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank God. <laughs> I thought I was talking to myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's see uh, what uh, what exactly we want. So let's go ahead and uh, let's git clone. So, by the way, I'm paying attention to the chat, and please, if you have any kind of question, uh, please uh, let me know, and uh, we, we will troubleshoot this together. So, I've already Git cloned my project, um, and I just increased a little bit the font right here so everyone can see. Um, but uh, after you Git clone the project, uh, there are two important files that you need to know. So, you don't really need to care about package JSON, package log, and readme. Um, well, well, you can revise README uh, if you really want to, to check out the steps, but it's uh, quite straightforward. All you need is, uh, is to know about the Trulio middleware. So this is uh, the backend authentication part of Embed ID, and I'm going to explain in detail what is Embed ID. Uh, all you need to know is that this is the API key, and I, I'm, I'm, I have committed this API key. So never commit the API key in production. However, for just for example, uh, purposes only. I, I committed this API key just so you can get you started immediately. Um, and then uh, what you so if you if when you whenever you log in in the platform, I'll show you how you can grab your own API key. Um, and then what you really uh, need to know is uh, the public key in the index HTML. So those two combinations um, authenticate us into embed ID. So. Um, that's the that's the only modifications that you need to do in those uh, when you after you git clone this project. So let's see what exactly is that project, anyways, right? So npm start one command. So one command and uh, it should give us uh, access to embed ID. So um, we are waiting some uh, to load this embed ID, and if it's a little bit sluggy, that's probably because uh, many of us are trying to load embed ID. Uh, but what is embed ID? Uh, embed ID is really a dynamic form generation. So uh, truly, we do identity verification. And one reason why this might be useful, this form, is that uh, many in many signups, um, whenever people, whenever you are operating a website, and uh, you you want to be verifying that people are actually uh, who they claim they are, you are requesting them to log in. So at Trulio, we, we provide a match or no match, depending on whether a person is real or not. Now, if I switch gears um, to Embed ID, and by the way, this is uh, the developer hub. So if you if you created your own experience, you are able to uh, to click on Embed ID and then create the, the new experience right in the gateway URL that uh, I posted on the chat. Um, and after you create the new experience, you go inside that experience. Uh, and in my case, it's API days. So if I go inside that experience, I, I'm able to see uh, the configuration of embed ID. Now, let's say that I'm not really interested in all of these fields. Um, I particularly care only about national ID and first name, last name. Uh, all I have to do is uncheck those fields and click Save. And can you imagine what will happen here if I refresh my page? Well, if this works uh, properly, I should be able to see uh, the updated configuration. So notice me that I just changed my configuration on the fly, uh, and I didn't have to write any single line of code. So that's the deep down uh, part of low code, no code. The idea that I changed, I just changed my configuration, and uh, I didn't have to commit a single line of code, but instead my configuration were updated live. Um, another cool thing about uh, 
about low-code, no-code applications is the idea that the, and the capability to handle uh, multiple business, uh, business logic slash business, business intelligence, intelligence uh, tasks. Um, and what do we mean by that is, uh, let's assume that we play with address a little bit. Um, and I don't know uh, where are you guys joining me from? Uh, I'm joining from Canada. Uh, feel free to post to me actually your country of preference so we can actually live test it right here. Um, in the chat, um, but it's interesting that uh, you know every country has a different uh, a different type of address uh, format. So if you click Austria, for instance, um, there is a different type set of uh, of the actual uh, format of the address, right? So if you go Denmark, um, you have a completely different fields. Uh, the same stands with Sweden, um, and the same you know you see like city is uh, is required right there. Uh, Turkey has its own and so on. So in a local no-code solutions, um, you are actually able to handle much of the business intelligent tasks that uh, traditionally would require tons of code. Um, and I see a lot of people are joining from, of course, Singapore, and uh, uh, we have a couple of China that's, uh, that, that, is, uh, that is excellent. Um, so that's the traditional idea of a local no-code no solution. And uh, just to explain a little bit, uh, okay, so we have this application, what we can do in the end. Um, so if we have the name and let's say, I uh, have my national ID uh, right here, um, and then I, I uncheck my address and I click save and I load my form, uh, which is a bad idea. And then I will open a little bit the, uh, the side panel right here, the console. So let's go ahead and let's make an, an example um, an example verification. So let's say current French. Um, and this current French spits me out an experience transaction ID. Now you might be wondering, I, I claimed that uh, this is gonna be a match or no match. What, what, how can I make use of this experience transaction ID? Well, if you open Postman um, and if you actually uh, curl, and I can post you the curl URL, um, you can actually uh, see uh, the data and see that uh, the actual transaction is a no match. Now, you, you might say, well, okay, well, why don't you transmit uh, the match or no match or this data directly to the browser? Where you generally want to be transmitting data, and especially when it comes to PII, you do have to really be careful about the way you're transferring data from one browser or one session to another. At Trulio, we, the, generally the pattern that we follow is that we have zero transmission of uh, personal identity, identity um, information data into the browser. And we strictify that rule and we say that every customer that wants to, um, to check a PII, you have to go through the backend channel. The backend channel will securely authenticate you and you can securely uh, transmit data through there. So that's a good pattern for you to follow whenever you are uh, building uh, identity uh, solutions. Now you see here, uh, there is a detailed, uh, the detailed uh, information regarding what happened. And actually for those of you uh, who might want to do the curl command, thanks to Postman for uh, generating that curl command, uh, but it's right here and you can actually utilize that. Now, um, in case you signed up uh, for a gateway, all you need to do really, and you want to be running your authentic authentication, you have to click on your experience. And then right here in the keys, you have to grab your credentials. So um, it's very uh, easy in case you want to actually verify the behavior. So now that we know how a no-code, low-code solution is and uh, how does it work, let's actually uh, jump into the, uh, to the fun stuff. And uh, I believe there is a huge value, um, and particularly as the developers don't pay, we pay much attention to the, to the pre to the present and the future. Um, but I think uh, it's important to highlight uh, the past and the history so we can uh, become better engineers and uh, build uh, build great stuff. So let's see what happened. Uh, 1981, the first the time uh, the real concept was introduced of, uh, of uh, dynamic generation of code. And uh, many of you might know UML uh, and the UML language uh, was unified modeling language. Um, particularly uh, in Java, where you can actually write your classes. 
and then uh, hit a button and then it will like dynamically generate code. Now the business process automation was great at that point, except one thing, it failed. <laughs> so actually, uh, why did it fail? And uh, by fail, we didn't mean that it didn't work. It means that we just didn't, we were not there yet. We didn't have the quality we expected. So the generated code often did not support uh, emerging coding best practices. It was, uh, it was just like a matter of generating uh, manual steps. Uh, there were a lot of security flows into that concept. Um, there will be affiliated developers that uh, will have to troubleshoot and jump, uh, you know, like in XML configuration, for instance, when it comes to Java, you would have to troubleshoot and write XML. Um, and they were really not built for scale. I mean, the concept of scale uh, wasn't that famous uh, up until uh, 2008, 2005. So, um, so then, then we, we, we went into the rise of the APIs. Um, and at that point, uh, there was a huge, in the last decade, in the previous decade, there was a huge rise of uh, multiple vendors rising up, Facebook developers, we have Slack, uh, which rise up and all these great vendors. So developers realized at that point, so before that, before, um, before this uh, 2000s, uh, this millennium, uh, if you remember, uh, if you remember, for instance, uh, Apple and uh, Sun Microsystems, they embraced building stuff from scratch. So um, up until then, you would generally prefer building your own uh, microprocessor and building your own uh, compiler just from scratch. Now, this status changed drastically uh, with, uh, with the rise of APIs and particularly the rise of JavaScript. So communities like NPM change the game and they say, well, actually, you don't have to develop everything from scratch. Um, the actual purpose is that you should be reusing as much as possible code base as is out there, and you can actually focus on your company's problem or your business problem. Um, so people uh, people converted from building something from scratch for actually learning not to not to spend precious resources and reinventing the wheel again and again, but instead just built whatever they had to build for their product. So we, we saw that status change in the software engineering world and, uh, and that wasn't up until the last decade uh, where, where we see this kind of uh, behavior. So um, great, we know what the local no code solution is, but uh, how is that really different? I mean, I mean how, is this, how is this really different from the internal revolution? So let's see uh, how is that different. So internet changed everything, and uh, the concept of cloud computing wasn't uh, up until uh, the last decade that was introduced. So um, I think one pioneer, which we might all agree, was uh, Netflix, uh, which changed uh, changed up the scale, and they introduced uh, a lot of uh, new terminologies, including uh, chaos uh, engineering, as well as uh, as well as uh, you know large uh, large scale output computing. Now, of course, these terminologies existed way before uh, millennium, but uh, it was up until that point where those principles were actually applied. So rather than offering an interface that simply obscures the actual code generating an application, the new generation of local platforms are now complete, self-contained, and solve a large common business use case. And really, this, this is a huge difference of what we saw from, from actual code automatic generation to no generation, low code slash no code uh, solution, just like we did with embed AV. So this is a huge, uh, a huge differentiation of where we used to be to where we are going. Um, and just to see a little bit of high level approach and uh, what does it mean really for the markets? I mean, is this, is this really useful? Well, let's see with numbers. Um, right now, 2020, we are about a $13.2 uh, billion market. Um, and we are approaching in five uh, years to fourfold this uh, actual uh, target. So we are we are aiming at forty five point five billion dollar market, just the local no code uh, framework uh, systems, and that's a source of markets and market analysis. So um, of course, uh, some, sometimes the numbers speak for themselves, and there is a huge market uh, and that uh, is going to be emerge, and it's actually emerging as we speak. Uh, regarding the local no-code uh, frameworks. 
So um, a couple of uh, examples here, and uh, of course, uh, uh, truly, we, we, we are not uh, alone. Uh, we, of course, there are major leaders in, uh, in, the, uh, in the industry with many of you know Salesforce, Microsoft, they have multiple uh, frameworks that uh, allow you to actually do local no code. And as well, you see a couple of other emerging companies that uh, uh, want to follow the terms of visionary and uh, actually apply this, uh, getting the leader bracket. Of course, uh, I believe that Stripe is also missing from here, but, uh, but there is great companies out there that uh, actually provide phenomenal uh, local no-code uh, frameworks. So great. Um, so now uh, we have to be classified as either professional or citizen developer. So a professional developer is a developer like me, for instance, where I, I code uh, all the time and uh, I, really, I really enjoy coding. But I also, uh, we also have to keep in mind that there are some other people out there that uh, they, are, uh, they are citizen developers, and by that we mean managers and executives, uh, or generally uh, potentially product engineers, where they really want to uh, get stuff done with no code. So where do we go from here? Um, the really strategy about local solution is that you have to identify your goal. So uh, truly we identified our goal and our goal is to solve identity verification. So we are an identity uh, network platform and we verify people across the globe. Now your goal might be different um, and that's, uh, that's great. You have to identify your goal and identify what are the key features of your platform that users cannot go without. So in our case, um, our users can't go without security. So it has to be 100% secure and the framework has to be reliable, but also it has to offer a standardized uh, methodology for identity verification. So you have to identify and drill down on your common or commodity features. Obviously keep it narrow and always try to build MVPs and POCs uh, and reiterate on those. So customer feedback is important, but also keep in mind that you can't build everything. Uh, keep it narrow and uh, build upon an MVP approach. Now, why verify identities anyways? I mean, uh, why, why is this so important after all, right? Uh, other than just, uh, of course, uh, regulatory uh, requirements and so on. Well, we see, especially with COVID, uh, we, we see a huge trend to emerging uh, online and uh, on, only online uh, world. So we see uh, fraud cases uh, rising and uh, trust me, I, I'm, work, I'm working for Trulio and uh, the staff and the example of uh, fraudulent activities I hear every day is, goes uh, beyond my mindset. I mean, uh, it's just spectacular how, how, inno innovative the, the, how innovative fraudsters can be. And so it's really tricky to provide uh, 100% secure uh, framework to just catch all the cases. Um, so it's really crucial whenever you have a network to actually know that the uh, people uh, and the, you know, your network has, is not affiliated with uh, money laundering or uh, any kind of fraudulent activities because that hurts your platform. If there is any money laundering happening in your platform, I guarantee you that uh, it's it's not gonna be uh, it's gonna be in, it's not gonna be living there uh, for a long time. So you want to make sure that you sanitize and you uh, eliminate all the fraudulent activities in your networks slash uh, applications. So great, now we understand uh, why identity verification is important. Um, but do I really need embed ID? I mean, I mean, what happens if I don't use Embed ID? And what happens if I really don't use a no-code solution? Um, after all, I can build it, right? So let's see what happens. Well, first of all, we have to build uh, a user interface. Um, and the user interface uh, that we saw uh, in the previous, uh, in the, when, when I demoed you Embed ID, we have to build that. Um, by the way, we have to build the integration as well uh, that comes with it. And that integration talks uh, with multiple HTTP calls to Global Gateway uh, per account. And also, because we want to enhance our IDV, we can do document verification as well. And that document verification is another integration on top of Global Gateway API. Well, great. 
Now we also have to manage our authentication part. Um, and that uh, adds up an extra layer of it. But not only that, now we want to manually uh, upgrade our workflow and we want to say uh, the doc B goes first and the other IDB goes, uh, goes next. Um, so great, that's, uh, that's another part. But we are not done yet. We have to implement another, uh, another layer and that's a bank verification because we understood that fraudsters got really smart um, that uh, we basically need an extra, an extra layer of security. So great. Uh, now we have to build another integration. And all in all, we have to maintain that. And we have to have a full-blown team just to manage this. Now, let's see what happens if we use a better idea and no code solution. Everything is done with just two snippets of code. So as you saw in, in the start, I showed you a backend and a frontend. So these are the two files where you actually inject in your infrastructure and you have a full-blown identity verification platform running with no actual code required whatsoever. So the great thing is that now you have to maintain only that part that allows you to be the gateway between uh, the Global Gateway API and uh, your application. So why is this great? Well, you don't have to have a full-blown uh, engineering team just to manage something that your business is not about. Um, most of the cases you might be building, um, we might, you might be building a network or you might be building a, a different application that uh, identity verification is only one part and it's not part of your business. So uh, at Trulio, we handle that part and we offer it for you in a no-code, low-code solution with Embedded ID. So um, at this uh, presentation, we went through the setup. I, I think I see, a, a, I see a couple of questions right here um, regarding on how to integrate. Uh, please let me know uh, if there are any, any kind of uh, questions regarding that setup. Um, remember that uh, you never commit uh, the actual uh, API keys right here. Um, I have added a to-do right there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean them up, but uh, I, I wanted you to, sh to see that uh, it's that easy to actually bootstrap your, uh, your, uh, your example website and integrate it with Embed ID. Um, and uh, let me know if there are any kind of questions regarding uh, you know, um, project setup or uh, anything else. So um, just to summarize the, um, the application and what, the, what we did here, we were actually able to integrate with Embed ID uh, but this, by just drag and drop. And uh, that was uh, a real low no-code solution. And that's how it looks like. Um, we were able to revise and learn from the history of low-code frameworks. And uh, it's, it's important to uh, sometimes look at the history and see, uh, see, see where we are and uh, where we are heading. We were highlighted the uh, important rise of the APIs. Um, and then last but not least, we were able to showcase that uh, low-code, no-code frameworks uh, look like uh, the way they look and uh, how is the future uh, is going to be looking like with uh, low-code applications uh, all over our, our applications. So uh, on behalf of Trulio, um, I'm Menelaus. Uh, thank you uh, very much for attending the workshop. Um, this is a gateway where you actually can sign up um, and you can test the embed ID or any other integration uh, with us. Uh, we are super, super happy to be here at API Days. Um, and on behalf of my company, I'm uh, Manalos Katsulares, and uh, thank you very much for attending. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any questions or uh, if uh, any of the moderators. Um, I, see, uh, I see a couple of actual uh, questions right here. So the one is, uh, well, how do you actually do bank verification? Um, actually, how do you do document verification? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's a, actually a good uh, question. So um, if we go back to gateway-admin and we create a new experience, so let's say create a new experience. So by default, we have identity verification, document verification, uh, and all these kind of options. Now I'm gonna do a doc v. Uh, doc v example, I'm going to name my, my experience, API days, and then I'm going to click on document verification. So I'm going to hit create. 
and then I'm going to see the actual experience pop up. So this is a great component that you can actually utilize for document capture. Um, and it's that easy. All you have to do is get, get your keys and then transmit them right here. So let's, let's actually do it live. So I'm going to get my key and I'm going to copy paste it right here. So if I did everything right and I update my experience right here, I'm able to see the document verification part. Now, um, if you if you if you scan this, you'll probably uh, be able to do uh, document verification. And uh, the important part of that is that you actually uh, force the workflow to go through your mobile. So what it means is that people will actually uh, load and do the document verification part through their mobile devices. Now, why is this important? Why it is important to uh, lead them through that direction? Well, uh, based on our metrics, we see a much more successful rate of a match or uh, an accuracy when people capture from their document uh, from from their from their mobiles. But not only that, um, there are a couple of uh, a lot of uh, yeah. And I see I see some someone actually uh, did the. Uh, did, uh, did try. So if you actually get your front image, you'll be able, I will see, uh, I will see your front image and so on. Um, but the idea is that uh, actual people um, have, a, there are a lot of bridges out there. So a, if someone is uh, having, has access to a data set, uh, they can easily try to uh, get, a, get, a, get, a, get, a, get this data and uh, Play this, play, uh, show it as it's theirs. Now, when you are forcing them to go through that route, you are forcing your users to do a capture, which means that they, it's much, much less likely to have a fraudulent activity. Of course, there are cases where people can actually uh, do something fraudulent, but most of the cases you are forcing them right there. Um, and uh, we see like an uh, actual person uh, taking uh, pictures, but. Uh, but it's actually pretty cool because you see live uh, with uh, with a socket IO, you see the the actual capture. Um, so yeah, um, this is uh, one of the benefits of of this approach. So of course, at truly we have a lot of a lot of examples of that, um, and uh, we are super happy to be here. So uh, if you want to see some more cool widgets that we have, uh, feel free to uh, send me a message. Uh, my handle is. Uh, at mcotolaris and i'm available in github on um, twitter and linkedin as well so feel free to connect and uh, let's talk about uh let's talk about a uh, fun uh, no code uh, approaches in javascript so thank you very much appreciate it